final lesson of Unit 1. This might be one of the more confusing learning targets, so let's break it down. It says that I can express an equation in terms of any variable. Let's look at the equation a equals b plus 1. a is the variable that this equation is being expressed with. It is saying a equals something, b plus 1. But if I were to subtract 1 from both sides, I could rewrite this as a minus 1 equals b. And now b is the variable that's alone, and this equation is expressed in terms of b. That's what this target's talking about. It's saying if I have multiple variables in the same equation, that I can manipulate the equation to isolate any one of the variables. Let's take a look at some key vocabulary. The section title is literal equations, and a literal equation is just an equation that contains more than one variable. A formula is an example of a literal equation. It states a relationship among different quantities, and typically it's written with one variable isolated. The rest of this lesson is going to be spent manipulating literal equations and formulas to get a particular variable isolated. Let's start things off by looking at the distance formula. The distance formula says that the distance traveled equals the rate of speed that you were going times the amount of time you were going at that speed. This formula is used in science, particularly when you know the rate and time and you're trying to determine the distance. However, sometimes you know the distance and the rate and you'd really like to know the time. Other times you know the distance and the time and you'd really like to know the rate. So it would benefit us to be able to rewrite this equation to isolate a different variable. Well, if we look at this, this is really rate times time over here. And if I wanted to get the rate alone, since it's getting multiplied by t, I could divide both sides by t. This would allow me to cancel out the t's, creating a 1, so just letting r be alone. And if I do it to one side, i got to do it to both sides. And this would rewrite the equation as the rate equals the distance divided by the time. Now, if you give me a distance and a time, I can quickly figure out the rate. So I've changed which variable we're paying attention to. In the first equation, we were paying attention to d. When we had distance equals rate times time, d was the variable that was isolated. Now, we're paying attention to r. Well, I could redo this problem again, and this time get t alone by dividing both sides by r. Because again, that gets rid of the r and leaves us with t equals d over r, which we could rewrite t equals d divided by r. And now if you give me a distance and a rate, I can divide them to figure out the time. Let's start doing some examples. This first one says solve the volume formula. So this is a volume formula. It says volume equals length times width times height for w. So they're saying let's solve for width. Let's get W alone. That's what solve for W means. It means get W alone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at W and say, what's keeping this guy from being alone? Well, this L is, and that's through multiplication, and so is this H, also through multiplication. They're keeping W from being alone. So what I want to do is I want to divide by those variables, because if they're attached by multiplication, dividing will undo that. So I'm going to divide by L, H. The L to get rid of the L, and the H to get rid of the H. But I have to do it to both sides. So here's divided by L, H over here as well. This makes the L and the H disappear, leaving us with a W. And it makes this side equal to V over L, H. And once I get W alone, we're done. It said solve for W. And my W is alone now, so problem over. Here's another one that might be a little bit trickier. Um, I like to deal with one operation at a time. So my goal in this problem is to get H alone. Well, right now there's a couple of things going on kind of keeping us from getting that H alone. There's this one half and there's this B. I'm going to take care of the one half first. If I ever have a fraction keeping my variable from being alone, I'll multiply by the reciprocal. 2 over 1. But I've got to do that to both sides. 2 over 1. Well, this is really just going to be 2a, dividing by 1 doesn't do anything, equals bh. And we're one step closer to getting h alone. And now it's the b through multiplication keeping h from being alone. 
and we'll get rid of that by dividing by b. Now, h is alone, and we have 2a divided by b left on the other side. Problem over. Let's take a look at one more quick easy one before moving on to the other part of this lesson. This problem tells us to solve for c, and the only thing keeping c from being alone is this 273 being added. So I want to undo that by subtracting. After subtracting, I'm going to get c and k minus 273. Now, I don't mind calling this the end of the problem, but on a multiple choice assessment, you may see them flip the equation to say c equals k minus 273. They're both the same, and they're both correct. All right, so this is one of the most important types of problems in the entire semester. Um, it is very similar to what we were just doing, but it's a skill that shows up in a completely different way, but a very important way later on in the semester. So we got to make sure that we know how to do this well. Okay, it says solve each equation below for y. So we see two variables, just like the previous problems, and we see that we're supposed to get one of them alone. We're supposed to get y alone. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, what is keeping y from being alone? Well, it's this 3x, and they're connected with addition. So how do I get rid of that? I subtract 3x. I do that to both sides, and I'm going to get y equals 4 minus 3x. It would also be acceptable to say that y equals negative 3x plus 4. Either one of these is acceptable. I think most of you right now are probably going to answer it this way, and that's totally fine, but later on we're going to learn how to give the answer this way typically. All right, so let's do one more of these, and again we're solving for y. Now, this is a problem where people make a lot of mistakes, so you have to be careful. You might be thinking that you need to add because there's a subtraction here, but it's the y that's negative, not the 3x. So if I want to get rid of this positive 3x, I want to subtract 3x. The right side's not going to be that bad, 7 minus 3x. But again, there's a big mistake people make. They tend to forget about this subtraction symbol or this negative sign, and they tend to just say y equals 7 minus 3x, which is not true. Negative y equals 7 minus 3x. This was negative. We can't lose that negative symbol. Now, when you have just a negative symbol, it's really negative 1y. And if I want that y to be alone, I need to divide by that negative 1. So I'm going to do that to every term in the problem. So we're going to get this, this gone, y is alone, equals negative 7. Negative divided by negative, positive 3x. And again, you could write this as 3x minus 7 instead of negative 7 plus 3x. All right, one more final quick question trying to solve for y. Right now, y has multiplication of 3 keeping it from being alone and this addition of 2x over here. So I'm going to start with AMEP and get rid of the addition or subtraction first. So I subtract the 2x and we get 3y equals 12 minus 2x. And then I divide every part by 3 to get y alone. That leaves us with y equals 4 minus two-thirds x. And that's our final answer. This tends to be a tougher lesson for students, but something I want you to realize is there's nothing different in terms of our methods from this lesson and any of the other solving lessons. The only difference here is that there's other variables in the problem. So continue to focus on your rules of simplifying each side and solving using AMEP, and these problems shouldn't be different if you can overcome the idea that there's other variables involved. If you came away with anything else, write that down now, but otherwise we'll see you in Unit 2.